Today, we're going to take a look at these amazing Action Man uniforms released by Palitoy under the banner of Soldiers of the Century. Hello, it's Dave from Vintage Toy Rush. Thank you for joining me. I really do, I really do appreciate all the support that this channel receives. So a big thank you from me. My Action Man collection has been in captivity for way too long. So I've started to free some of my favorites, beginning with the Soldiers of the Century. We'll briefly cover some history. It's not that boring, honestly. And then we'll dive into the uniforms close up using my trusty confidential intelligence manual as a guide. In 1966, Palato released the basic action soldier figure, which could be enhanced by purchasing additional accessory cards, such as the combat sets. A year later, Palatoy started releasing the popular Soldiers of the Century uniform cards, representing fighting forces from around the world. There are six uniforms, each available either on a single complete card or on two half cards. These cards matched Hasbro's earlier G.I. Joe Soldiers of the World, with the exception of the Japanese outfit, which was never offered by Palatoy. Also included, was this intelligence manual showing line drawings of each soldier with details of their equipment and an informative description. As a bonus, you were also educated on weapons, tanks, insignias, and Morse code, because you never know when Morse code is going to come in handy. My intelligence manual tells me the Australian jungle fighter is an extremely tough and resourceful soldier. During World War II, he figured prominently in jungle battles throughout the Far East. And here we have the Australian jungle fighter. He's certainly dressed for the jungle. He has his campaign hat, his jacket, shorts, socks, and short brown boots. And in the jungle, he will certainly need an entrenching tool, a jungle knife and a machete in his sheath. He also has some grenades. And of course, every Australian jungle fighter needs a flamethrower. And his medal is the Victoria Cross. From the intelligence manual, the German soldier, often called a stormtrooper, achieved many of his early successes in World War II by the use of Blitzkrieg tactics. Despite the potential controversy, the German Stormtrooper outfit was actually one of the more popular outfits from Palatoy. Here we can see his helmet, tunic, trousers, and blackjack boots. For accessories, he had a cartridge belt, which held a holster for a Luger pistol, two stick grenades, and on the back, we can see Schmeisner submachine gun and a fill pack. And finally, his medal was the Iron Cross. My intelligence informs me that the French resistance fighter was a peasant farmer, a shop assistant, a factory worker. In fact, these heroic members of the underground army came from every walk of life. They fought in small bands all over occupied France. And here, we have one of those heroic French resistance fighters. You can see he has a beret, sweater, trousers, and short black boots. He has a holster for holding his revolver, a knife, and grenades. And if you look on the back, he also has a .765 machine gun. He also used hidden radio sets to send vital information to allies via Morse code. His medal is the Croix de Guerre. We are told the Russian infantryman's gallant fighting to rid his homeland of the enemy has become a legend of modern warfare. The Red Army, as the Army of the Soviet Union is called, perfected an elaborate method of defense in depth and anti-tank tactics. And here is the Russian infantryman. And we can see he has a fur-lined hat, a jacket, trousers, and blackjack boots. For accessories, he has field glasses in a case that is held by a strap that goes over his shoulder. He has a DP machine gun on a bipod with a magazine 
as well as two grenades and an ammo box. And finally, his medal is the Order of Lenin. My intelligence manual tells me the proud wearer of the Green Beret is a member of Special Forces, one of the toughest units in the US Army. Jumping from helicopters, paddling up alligator-infested rivers, climbing mountains, hacking through jungle, traversing snow, it's all part of the job for Special Forces. And here is a member of Special Forces. You can see he has a green beret, camo scarf, green jacket and trousers, and tall brown boots. He has a belt with a holster for his .45 pistol, grenades, and an M16 rifle. He also has a field radio. And finally, his medal is the Silver Star. Now this one is a 40th anniversary version because the originals are scarce and very expensive. My intelligence informs me that during the Second World War, the British infantryman saw service in every part of the world. He has a reputation for grit and determination, which is second to none. His discipline and coolness under fire have been a model for many other armies. And here we have a British infantryman wearing his helmet, his tunic, trousers, gaiters and lace-up boots. He also has a belt holding a canteen cover with canteen and a gas mask case for holding his gas mask. He also has a Sten machine gun and his medal, like the Australian jungle fighter, is also the Victoria Cross. Okay, I've displayed my Soldiers of the Century action figures in my display cabinet. So finally, yes finally, I've started the Action Man display. Now these vintage action figures, or six of them together, are an impressive sight. And in some ways I think these are as good as, if not better, than many modern action figures that are out there. If you look at the articulation and the detail that was put into the clothing and the accessories, Sometimes it's hard to believe. The clothing is actually made of cloth. Yes, cloth. A material that seems to be forgotten in the modern action figure world. And all of this originates way back from the 60s and 70s. And this is why lots of collectors love these vintage action figures. And I hope you found some enjoyment from this video. If you did, please subscribe, please like, and hit that notification bell for future videos. Now, all I have left to say is stay safe and cheers.